let's play with a little bit of hierarchy now. So remember that we are still not making pretty things here and it's all about understanding our quote and getting used to our words. Now as a reminder, I'm just going to turn off the layers, create a new one. And here you should write your quote by dividing it in between the primary, secondary and those not important words. We are gonna explain this better in the next step, but I just wanted to have a little recap of what's happening in my sentence. So now I'm selecting another color and I'm putting the primary words just a tad smaller than the secondary words. And now before we move on, I'm just gonna zoom out the whole composition and see if I can still understand what's the quote about. So the primary words should be really visible and the secondary words should be a little bit less visible but still there. Now, if I understand what's happening, if I understand the meaning of the quote, that means that we are on the correct path. Oh, and if you're doing this on a piece of paper, just make sure that you get a little bit away from it. Now, I just erased what I did and I'm gonna turn on the previous layers where I had the main hierarchy of the words and I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller and put it on top of my canvas. Lowercase and uppercase letters. Let's study when and how to use both. For this exercise, I'll first write the quote using big letters, so capital letters, and then right next to it, I'm gonna write the quote using lowercase or like small caps. Now, at this stage, I'm sure that you can already see what's going on in here. So let's study a little bit of the spaces those generate. You don't have to do this with your sentence, but I just wanted to explain it in a way that it's a little bit more understandable. So you see that this rectangle, as I adapted to the different words, all the words are kind of compressed in between this line. And this just happens with the capital letters. So what happens to the small letters when we put this rectangle on top of them? You can see that because of these letters that go up and down, our spaces are not gonna be consistent as before in the uppercase letters. But we'll go back to that in a couple steps. Now, before moving on, I want you to draw a line in the middle of the two sentences you have right now. Now you understand your quote. You remember the word hierarchy and you're ready to start composing a layout. If you wanna get better at it, repeat this process with different quotes and you'll see that the more you do it, the faster you'll get to understand different sentences. Let's now adapt the size of our words once again. I gave you an example on how to do this, but now let's do it for real. So go to the selection tool, select the rectangle option, and then separate each line at a certain distance from the next. By doing this, we'll get a solid space for us to make the words bigger and smaller. All right, so now let's select the primary words, in my case, live and melody, and I'm making them bigger. If you're doing this on paper, you can just rewrite your sentence on a new paper. Now, instead of making the secondary words bigger, I'm just gonna get the tertiary or those that were not important and I'm just gonna make them smaller. Remember that while you change the size of these words, you can bring them together so the whole quote looks like a group actually and it doesn't look like individual words. All right, so now select both sentences and bring them in the middle of the artboard. Why uppercase letters are easier to play with? Well, lowercase letters have a bunch of ascenders, uh, for example, the letter D, and also descenders, let's say the tail of the G, meaning they are harder to fit in the grid. 
Let's find out. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn off all the layers and I'm gonna create a new one. You don't have to do this, it's just theoretical, it's just for you to understand the difference in between uppercase and lowercase and what's a descender and what's an ascender. So here I've just drawn a couple lines and I'm gonna put a word in it. I'm just gonna select a calligraphy brush that I made in the past for one of our sets, but you can select any kind of calligraphy brush that comes with Procreate. Now I'm just gonna write the word unsung, since it's a part of the sentence that I'm using today. And as you can see, now that I did the G, you can see that I'm generating some blank spaces on the down part and also on the upper part. This can be filled by other words, for example, or some ornaments, illustrations, even some ligatures or some embellishments from the letters themselves. So for example, here I wrote melody down, and then up here I could do a couple ornaments to cover the space. Now let's see what happens if we don't use lowercase letters and instead we use uppercase letters. You've seen this before for sure, but you can see that you can fill up the spaces using capital letters way easier. And yes, you could complicate things by adding some embellishments or flourishes, but if you just keep it simple, it's gonna be way easier to fill up spaces with this kind of letters. And now for example here, we could just move on and write what's left on the sentence. All right, so now let me just show you an image from our set, this layout lettering masterclass, where we kind of clarify how to use blank spaces with a real example. Here you see the same lettering piece, but using different techniques to cover blank spaces. As you can see, there are endless possibilities to do this, but the first step would be using 3D letters. This can be projected almost anywhere, so it's a really good technique. Then the second one is ornaments. And this is probably one of the easiest. Why? Well, because ornaments can get more difficult or can be really easy to do. In this course, I'll show you how to do my favorite ones that are super, super easy to do and you're gonna be able to fill up all your blank spaces with them. And finally here we have flourishes. Flourishes come from letters. You can either make them from script letters and if you wanna complicate yourself a little bit more, you can also do it with capital letters. I just wanna give you a little tip if you were to do this, please, Keep it quite simple and don't make these flourishes super intricate because it's gonna add too much complexity to your pieces. So yeah, this is a little introduction to blank spaces, which is a subject that can get difficult and probably is a little bit too advanced at this point, but I wanted to give you a couple tips just in case you wanted to get introduced to it.